Idan Reichel is perhaps one of the most influential Israeli musicians in the world. He's a singer, a songwriter, a pianist, and he can even play the accordion. But he's especially known for his distinctive musical fusion, which brings together artists from all over Middle East and Africa. While some people might label his work as world music, he likes to call it Israeli. I personally grew up with his music, and I can tell you it makes me proud to be Israeli every time I hear it. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you, Dan Reichel, join us in the studio. We've met in the past, and you know I'm a huge fan. Thank so you. congratulations on this new album you have coming out. It's the first time uh, you're going solo, essentially. Yes, thank you for having me here. Celebrating uh, the new release, the new album. A uh, solo album for the first time after 12 years with the Idan Reichel Project. But still the Idan Reichel Project is live and kicking. It's just a parallel, just another path of the career. So, so why did you decide to do this instead of just, you know, doing the normal group thing that you guys do? The songs are very personal, uh, about my family, about the daughters. Uh, I felt that it's more uh, uh, kind of my inner voice that I would like to share with the listeners. So your albums typically gather music artists from all over the world. You have from Ethiopia yes. to, to Argentina, everywhere. Why is that? Why do you guys choose to, to come together in this way? We're traveling uh, all over the world and uh, meeting amazing artists from Alicia Keys in Cent Central Park, New York, to uh, one of the greatest uh, countertenors uh, in the world, Andreas Scholl from Germany, Patrick Boel from France, Vifa Kature from Mali. I think that um, everyone um, together, we're building uh, bridges uh, through, mu through music and it's uh, just a great adventure for the past 12 years. And so what's amazing is that each of these artists are extremely talented on their own, but they decide to come together and perform as a group, you know? Like, yeah. where is the ego in this equation? Yeah, yeah. So I think it's, it's about, uh, always it's about three parameters. One is that each one of them is an amazing solo artist. Uh, second, that they are willing to share the stage, sometimes to do back vocals. And the third uh, thing, that it will be just good people, good people to be on the road, uh, good people to spend time with. And I think that we are proudly uh, represent uh, the soundtrack of Israel uh, the past 10 years. Which is interesting, right? Because you're known as having this world music, but you like to say that it's Israeli. Uh, once we are, when we are playing music in Israel, people define it as Israeli mainstream. Once you're touring outside of Israel, people would define it as uh, world music, which is actually a great compliment because uh, World music artists are all those artists who are bringing the soundtrack of the place that they came from. Edith Piaf from France, or Bob Marley who became the voice of Jamaica, or Mercedes Sosa for, uh, for Argentina. So if people go out uh, after our concert and remember this as Israeli music, it's the greatest compliment for us. So a lot of people argue that, that your music is actually promoting peace in a lot of senses because it's so intercultural. Is that a message that you're trying to send? Of course, uh, but we're, well, we are making music, just music, but the side effects, uh, you can definitely understand this because you can see super extremely right-wing uh, uh, people uh, uh, singing side by side with very left-wing up to uh, Ali Amr from Ramallah or, uh, or Miran Warawad. It's the first time we brought for the first time uh, uh, the Arabic uh, language to the Israeli mainstream. Um, I think that, yeah, you know, I have a very strong political view, but I, the reason that I'm not saying it because I feel that at my, I, at my back, I feel that I'm uh, leading all these over 150 musicians, uh, singers uh, from all over. So you're bringing all these people together. I mean, do you believe that music in Israel should be geared politically? Should it, should it be promoting a certain message? Every artist can choose his uh, path. Uh, I feel that what we're doing is, uh, is building bridges between cultures uh, and between nations through music. 
but it's important to, to, to remember that what we're actually doing is, is music. First, first and foremost, we are creating music. If people can take it to other places, I'm very honored to contribute to this, uh, but the essence is being a musician. Well, your music is music that is now all over the world and you travel and go on world tours all the time. Yes. I met you last year in the U.S. Yes. Um, and so how do you say your music is being received? Is it being received differently because you're an Israeli artist? Is, you know, your identity is an Israeli effect, how people listen to your music? Well, I feel that we are carrying uh, our being Israeli all over uh, the world on our shoulders, but uh, proudly. Uh, everywhere in the world there will be um, uh, calls to boycott the, the music as part of the BDS movement uh, to boycott our concerts. Um, but I feel that uh, it's a great opportunity to go out to all these people who, are, who choose to protest against us and to explain us that uh, the voice of artists should not be muted and I would love to see in all these great performing art centers that we are performing in the USA I would love to come an evening before and night after to listen to music from Lebanon or Palestinian artists or, or Iranian artists I think that the this might be an interesting role for all these artists absolutely so so what is the future now you have this album on your own you still have the Dan Reichel project What's well, next? Well, once you have two daughters, one is six months and one is uh, two years, uh, you don't think uh, so much uh, to the future. You think, let's sleep in the night as much as we <laughs> I can. can only <laughs> yeah, so you, you have a, a six year old, you said, and a two year old as well? Yes. Wow, that's a lot of work. Uh, especially easy. to applause to the mother, applause to the mother, yes. <laughs> so where can we see you performing next? That I'm, is what I'm, our viewers want to know. I'm playing um, uh, every day, uh, playing now um, uh, con solo piano concerts to, um, to launch the, the new album. On February at the port of Tel Aviv, we're taking 10 concerts in a row with the Dan Reichel pro Project. Wow. If you uh, intend to be in Israel, come over. And um, we'll, around uh, February 19th, we'll be around again on the road on Europe. The best is just to um, uh, track us, uh, to follow me on Instagram yeah. or Twitter or Facebook, and then you'll see all our tour dates. Absolutely. Well, I cannot wait to see you perform again. Thank and you. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. And here. everybody, listen to his new album. Yes. It's, we get to hear it done alone, so it's nice. Thank you.